Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is uh, episode 411, as it turns out. Huh? Nobody? It's Nobody. only 100 off of my favorite band. Uh, yeah. We are at QuakeCon 2016 uh, in the about? governor's, uh, I was going to say ballroom, we're not in a ballroom, we're in the governor's uh, lecture hall. Uh, there's There are people who are watching the live stream, can't see, we've got a good number of people here. Um, it's I'm full. We've got like 200 people in the 200 audience. 200 people. Yeah. It's, it's packed. L- listen it's to all that. Packed. I mean. uh, and they brought us, the, the very generous people brought us alcohol to drink. Um, so Alan will be on the floor within 40 minutes asleep, for sure. Um, so let's see. What, what were the questions that were asked? I said we'd answer on the show. Oh, where's Josh? Josh um, apparently doesn't get enough vacation time to come to QuakeCon this year. It's kind of bullshit, right? Yeah, it took him too many days off from being hungover. Well, he would have done that here too. So Josh is Josh is sorely missed. I'm sure I'm sure he's watching at home, right? He's probably not. No, actually. not. I can go into the stream here and see. Um, and then uh, let's see. We we just got here the well, we got here this evening. We got here later than we normally get here. Normally we leave on Tuesday night. Uh, and this year we left left on Wednesday night, and then because I became old, uh, we no longer drove 15 hours straight through. We stopped outside Memphis uh, to sleep for six hours. It was going to be longer than six hours, but Ken's alarm went off anyway, <laughs> accidentally, apparently. And we did an interesting thing on the stream. Uh, we used a service called Mixler, M-I-X-L-R, because nobody uses all the vowels anymore. Yep. Uh, Mixler, which is basically like a live streaming audio service, right? And, and then it, it, it's got a chat built in. It's got a chat built in, and yeah, it's uh, one of the guys, Jeff Gersman on Giant Bomb, uses it when he's driving into work and stuff. That's how I knew about it. So we were live streaming literally nothing uh, of us just BSing the whole way uh, through. And I turned it off uh, as we were approaching our hotel. I was like, okay, this, this is it. Hey, everybody, have fun. Maybe, maybe we'll stream tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and uh, we go through, go to the hotel, check in, immediately fall asleep. I wake up with Ken's alarm. And uh, I groggily scroll through my text messages, and I see a text from a buddy named Jim who says, hey, it's like at 5.30 in the morning, he says, hey, uh, I don't know if you know this, but your iPad is still on, it's still streaming (laughs) audio, and there are people listening to you snore. 22. 22 uh, people. In the room. Uh, And I was like, and I, I immediately started to think back. What shit did what? I say? What did you say? <laughs> After I thought the stream was off. We've said, had this issue before when yeah. we've done live streams where we think the audio is off, but the audio is not off. Yeah. Uh, and when you have people uh, in from out of town like Tom from NVIDIA or whoever who are maybe talking about embargoed stuff, that becomes a problem. I was more thinking of like what idiotic... At two in the morning. Yeah, like potentially infuriating thing did I say, um, and apparently nothing, or at least nobody brought it to my attention, but it actually streamed the entire overnight, uh, and, and I, when, I, when I woke up, there were 22 people still, <laughs> yeah. you were just like still <laughs> and here's, to the stream. Here's what's awesome. The iPad was still in your backpack, the iPad was right? In, yeah. And these guys are talking about, what's that sound? Oh, it must be the fridge. And they were right. Yeah. <laughs> They heard this, this sirens. The, the, yeah, they heard yeah. sirens go by. Apparently, there was uh, an emergency. It was not one of us. Um, it, but, like, literally the whole time, and, I, and I, I was like, well, screw it. I guess we'll just continue to stream. Like, we just left it on in the room yep. on purpose this time while well, everybody was getting ready. And when we went to uh, eat <laughs> breakfast, they, uh, critiquing our McDonald's drive through order, uh, we took uh, the iPad and streamed in when we went to Dairy Queen to get lunch. Yep. Um, and I think we ended up we ended it right when we pulled up here, and it was like 19 hours that it had live streamed audio for straight through. Uh, so an interesting service, if nothing else, but works well. It does, yeah, it does. Works, it does works, works too well. Works better than you think. Yeah, maybe as well. So uh, I don't know if that was entertaining some people. And like there was a time where uh, Alan and Ken fell asleep in the car while I was driving, and I was being very courteous, and I decided I don't want to wake them up by talking, even though I'd be talking to other people who are watching, you know, 50 or 60 people who are listening on live stream. And so what I did instead was I would like type two or three word things. So you're just trying to kill us. Oh, so you were, oh. Uh, I don't know if I was trying, I would have done it. I was trying to not. Uh, But I did take a picture. If you look at my Twitter feed, I took a picture of like Ken, his neck looks like it's broken, literally. Like in the front seat, kind of, you know, mouth agape. As it turns out, my physics model is just a rag doll. So it's fine. Now I need to look at 
Ryan's Twitter. And, uh, it was, oh, you haven't seen this? No, I haven't <laughs> seen it yet. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good picture. <laughs> Pretty, that's pretty good. I probably need to retweet it. So that was our that was our journey here. Oh, and I also forgot the other dumb shit we did where we got into the hotel, right? And um, the door was just open the whole night when we were slept. Like, it didn't close the door all the way. didn't close all the way. <laughs> and so not only did we leave an audio stream on that kind of told everybody where we were at. We, yeah. we sent a GPS stream, which we did stop a little before the yeah. hotel. Yes. An audio Glimpse. stream where we mentioned what hotel we were at when we thought it was stopped. Yes. And we left, we, the, we door left the door open. We basically unlocked. asked to be murdered <laughs> by random people. And uh, it didn't happen. Uh, right. So, I, like, I'm <laughs> Ken's oh. neck, Ken's neck, Ken's neck does look it broken. Does look like he's, dude. Yeah. I was like weakened at burning. Zing. <laughs> so that was our that was our journey here, um, and uh, we're excited. We're gonna do our workshop on Saturday. I hope all, all you guys are gonna <laughs> make it back for it. I apologize. I apologize for the 10 a.m. Start time. It was not my decision. I asked for a much later start time. Uh, but as this happens, when you're the small guy on the list, you get bumped down and down and down. So hopefully um, you guys will get coffee early enough and you won't be so hungover from Friday. You can make it. It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's if the you morning after drunk, Master Pancake. Like, there's, not a, there's not a breathalyzer test to get into the event, right? So... Um, and you know, uh, Tom will be here, so uh, you know he'll get the drunk people riled up again, if nothing else. Of course, so, <laughs> there's that. We have a ton of hardware to give away. A lot of it is sitting here in front of you guys. I don't know if you saw it when you came in, but we actually have a whole lot more stuff that was supposed to be here tomorrow. Now, too, cases and motherboards and video cards. Nvidia has 1080s and 1070s. They're bringing. We're going to build a wall uh, of cases. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a great wall. And Corsair is going to pay for it. And, uh, <laughs> and obviously, uh, for people who are watching the uh, video but don't have the audio, they, they, the audio can't see it, we have our theme this year is Make PC Gaming Great Again. And so our workshop t-shirts take a little bit of a different theme. They don't actually even, I thought about this afterwards, it was kind of dumb. They don't even say Hardware Workshop anywhere on the shirt. Yeah. They literally just say this. <laughs> and they have some logos on the back. But we do have uh, some stickers that everybody can have. Uh, we have some uh, that, that have that. And we have some with just our logo. And then we have our campaign buttons as well so that you can write us in in your presidential election because that's really the best option still um, for that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. I'm really going to focus on 2020, but if you want to get it started early with the write-in vote this time, that's, that works for me. Um, so we do talk about hardware on the show sometimes, and we don't really have a rundown or a list of things, but I have a couple of items here that are of interest. Um, NVIDIA released a new video card, the Titan X, the new Titan X, a re like the same damn name of the previous card, Titan X. No, <laughs> no. See, XNA on the PXA. Like I, if, if NVIDIA had called it that, I would have been okay with it, right? Um, but as just like an underground swell of people who actually think they're going to convince NVIDIA to change the name of their product, it's not going to work. Remember when everyone said they were going to call it the Weed the Revolution still because that's a stupid name? Yeah. That worked out well for them. It didn't work out. Still but again, name. that's something NVIDIA or NVIDIA, and Nintendo probably should have done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so the new Titan X um, is built on their Pascal stuff. It's, it's an incredibly, insanely fast video card. Uh, Faster what, than you were expecting. Uh, actually, yeah, it is. It's 3,584 CUDA cores, if my memory serves right. Uh, base clock at around 1,400 megahertz. Um, so it, it's about, what did I say, 35% faster than a GTX 1080? Right? So yeah. it's really interesting to see a company just, like, throw products out on the market, like one after another after another. 1080, yeah. and then I think it was two weeks later, it was 1070, and then maybe, like, what, a month later was like, the 1060? Oh, wait, we got another one that's 30% faster. Here, let's just put that one out. And it's not like they needed to, right? Like, there's not a lot of... Like, it's not AMD wasn't coming out with a high-end competitor the yeah. next month or something, and then they released the Titan X, this new one, and that's, like, even needed less than anything else, right? You already had the clear performance leadership with the GTX 1080 over anything else. Um, well, what are they going to do, not release it? Yeah. I, I mean, I, don't, oh. I mean, clearly they, they had ordered the chips, and so they were going to do something with it. <laughs> well, we've got to put this thing out now that we've got them. But it's important that you didn't make uh, probably. I mean, that's, 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 that could I mean, be it. Yeah. But they also know that they're only going to sell so many Quadro P6000s anyway, uh, especially because they're even you know higher priced. I don't even know what a Quadro P6000 costs. It's probably like four or five grand, isn't it? Probably, probably slightly so. more than the internet connection at the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's my new metric. Yeah. How many internet connections is it? Uh, PC Perspective is not affiliated with Hilton Anatol. Uh, uh, but the Titan XP, <laughs> or Titan X, is... <laughs> Yeah, I did. You said it. <laughs> what the hell? I did say it. Uh, now it's forever. Um, it, so it's 30 or 40% faster than the 1080, which was surprising to me. Uh, and then obviously it kind of blows away everything else on there. But it is $1,200, right, which is important to, to point out that it is the, the, clearly the fastest product that exists, uh, but it is clearly the most expensive consumer product that exists. Uh, and so those two things kind of should go uh, together. Uh, $500 more expensive than the supposed price of the GTX 1080, like the 699 kind of founder's edition price of things. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody here is of that, of that caliber of person where it's like, okay, I'm going to spend the stupid amount of money because I'm going to buy a product that I'm going to keep for a really long time or you just have enough money that doesn't matter how long you keep it if you're spending $1,200 on a video card. Um, but I, I, I always wonder how many people there are that do that, that buy Titan X's or buy uh, the Titan Black. Uh, was it Titan Black? That was the one that, that came out afterwards, uh, the original Titan. That was like 1500 remember, The right? original yeah. Titan came out, and then the 980 Ti came out, and it was faster than the Titan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they released the Titan Black that was actually faster. But had the FB64 performance. Yes. So. Yeah. Yep. And these chips don't really have that option. So well, I'm, I'm just surprised that uh, it doesn't have HBM. I mean, it Mic begs up the question. Huh? Mike, closer no, to your fine. face. I'm just oh, he's he's it up. Um, it's just, it begs the question is what, what's wrong that they can't use HBM? Because, I mean, theoretically, it should make, I mean, you know it doesn't make it insanely fast because yeah. of how Fury X is doing. But um, theoretically, you know, Intel's been doing level three memory forever, and more level three mem- more level three cache makes things much faster. HBM theoretically is along a similar it's, vein. I mean, it's really just a cost benefit, right? So look at uh, um, the Fury X is a four gigabyte card, and it's limited to that because of the first generation of HBM technology. Now it was rated at five hundred twelve gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. The Titan X um, with GDDR5X is 480 gigabytes per second. So it's pretty close to matching that. Um, And everything is a balance, right? Like, you need to provide enough memory bandwidth to your GPU so that it is not bottlenecked in scenarios uh, where GPU workload is coming in, right? So you can provide more memory bandwidth, but if the workloads don't take advantage of it, you don't have the Mm. GPU horsepower to take advantage of it, then it's kind of you're either wasting money or you're wasting costs or... Uh, or, or yield or something to that effect. It, it all, end of the day, comes down to money. Um, and as fast as that card is, obviously, the memory is not the no. I mean, the it's issue. possible that with HBM2, it would be a little bit faster. Um, yeah. But you also have to take into cost, right? It's, HBM2 is brand new. It's limited production. Uh, it decreases your yield because you add a significant step to the process in terms of adding an interposer and then uh, having to send it someplace else to be manufactured in that way. Yep. Um, do you, do you think that NVIDIA knew AMD wasn't going to have a spectacular high-end GPU on 14 nanometer, and so they decided, let's say a year ago, to not push HBM on, what's this, GP1? And, uh, it's you know, not GP100, is it? It's- I, don't, I don't, actually, I don't think that's the case. Um, despite what I think a lot of people believe the industry does, they're really not that reactive to each other. Right? The only place they can actually be reactive is kind of last second price changes because the, jo- the GPU dies that they're building in the Titan X were ordered eight months ago. Right? They had to make this decision a long time ago. Sure, but um, yeah. well, I mean, they probably, like, they're... with the memory controller, it might have been more flexible that way since they already built the HBM memory controller for yeah. the full GP100. But the, me- the memory stuff aside, I mean, they might have just this line that we see, this progression of stuff that they're coming out with that's mm-hmm. just going faster and faster. I think maybe they thought they were going to get more competition, and they were just... I don't know. Like, they were designing that stuff to compete with stuff, right? The potential stuff. Well... Not knowing whether or not it would exist. Yeah, I mean, again, keep in mind when Pascal development started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a long time ago. Three years ago. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, you could see, oh, well, of course, you would expect your competition to have a better part the next time around. But when it came time to, like, figure out what the product line that you're going to build around this particular GPU is, yeah. they knew that AMD wasn't going to have Vega out, they weren't going to have you know, a product competitive with it, so they could say, well, we can price it at whatever the hell we want. Right. And nobody's going to be able to say anything because there's no competition. And that sucks, obviously, for everybody else, because 
Now, if you look at now in stock.net and you try to find a GTX 1080 for the 599 price tag, good luck. Right? If you try to yep. find a 1070 with the price that starts with a three, good luck. Um, <laughs> luckily, we're going to give some away on Saturday, so you can get them for free that way. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it, it sucks for the consumer, but as a like free market country, you kind of just, well, I, that sucks, I guess. Like, I mean, the same thing happened to Intel, right? AMD's processor side kind of fell off. Well, it's been it's been a much longer run, and that's AMD, not exactly yeah. a free market argument. Well, the x86 license, but that's a whole. I other mean, thing. AMD could yeah. could like Zen could yes, be an amazing but, but, part and put pressure. But, but, in, in, Intel, but so in, in theory, a third party GPU competitor could come in because there's not that licensing barrier. Uh, it yes. would require so yeah, much yeah, R and D money. It's not practical. The number of competitors, but, but yeah. AMD still hasn't done anything differently. Yeah. Or if they decide that with the top base render, they didn't run the extra bandwidth. On the memory side, yes. Right, and that was a story that we posted as well um, where David Cantor, one of the smartest guys that I know uh, in terms of graphic and processor tech, um, figured out that NVIDIA uses a, uh, a Tyler-based rasterizer now. Okay. Uh, and they actually have on Maxwell as well. Nobody knew it. Okay. Right? This is how secrets work, right? <laughs> um, and so because of that, they were able to effectively, I think the number he told me, when I called them with like 60% or something kind of improvement in effective memory bandwidth. Is that because of the compression? It's just because of the way the, the Tyler is working, right? Okay. They can yeah. just more effectively get the, uh, the rasterization done and through it, right? And they, like, they do they, compression been, improvements yeah. as well. But and they've been quoting these effective memory bandwidth numbers. We just weren't necessarily sure of where everything came from. Right. They always would say, well, our architecture improves it by this much, and then our... Uh, uh, Compression. Uh, compression improves by this much, and here's your result, right? And we never really knew what the architectural changes were. Um, and so that's something that NVIDIA has developed. They never talked about it because they didn't want AMD to figure out and, and duplicate it. I don't know what complexities there are in kind of implementing that architecturally as opposed to just... I'm, I'm sure it's not something you can just do, oh, by the way, let's add that in uh, at the last yeah. minute. But uh, it's, it's kind of an impressive little change that they have. Um, and... You know, AMD does this too. And, and it, it, like all these companies, they're doing these really interesting small changes that can have potential to make significant differences. If you look at what AMD's done with Vulkan and DX12, like the integration of, of the Mantle API into Vulkan, has huge gains in some very specific cases, not all cases. Um, and asynchronous compute and all that type of stuff. Like NVIDIA has a, a, a level of support for it, but it's not as good. But at the end of the day, all anybody really cares about, whether it be uh, your, your rasterization methods or how you, well you compute async, is how many frames per second do you get in that game at those settings and how smooth is the gameplay? Like the experience at the end of the day is all anybody cares about or should care about, right? As a geek, you just want to learn about that stuff and see how cool it is, how they're doing it. But at the end of the day, if you're just plugging into your computer to play Doom, that's what you want to, that's what you want to do. Um, so nobody bought a Titan X here? Anybody? I will say, unless I'm surprised by Tom when he shows up, I asked for some to give away, and they didn't bring any. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say one. I asked for some to give away. Uh, so they didn't, they didn't do that. Yeah, see if I'll meet you in the middle at one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I get, what's great about Tom is I'm really good friends with him, and I can just throw him under the bus at a, any random moment, and it's totally fine. And like, I could just tomorrow say, and Tom told me he's going to give away a brand new Titan X. <laughs> and, and, he'll, and he won't go like, oh, no, I can't do that. No. no. He'll be like, uh, okay. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see if maybe I uh, leak that too early. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, didn't he give away his own? Um, well, I think that might have been at a BlizzCon or something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. When, when, where was no, there was about? one where he had two that I think were supposed to be for demo or for him to show off. He yeah. ended up giving away one. Was that at a QuakeCon? Yes. Yeah. Because I know we gave away the, the first back, Titan X when we did that live stream out of that NVIDIA. He then. almost gave away the second one. Oh. Well, you know. He but can, fortunately, we they can afford for it. time. They can afford it. They make them. <laughs> um... <laughs> There's, they there make appears to be a unicorn in the background. Um, eh, you know. That's fine. We're very welcoming in this group. Everybody yeah. is welcome. <laughs> it's a safe space. It's a, it's a safe space, indeed. <laughs> I mean, we left Josh at home this year, so. Yeah, yeah we leave Josh to <laughs> make it a safe the, space. The unicorn, yeah. is, for the unicorn is safe because Josh is not here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it's accurate. I yeah. hope he is listening now. 
<laughs> He'd be chasing hot dogs down the hallway with it right now. Uh, <laughs> what else happened? Um, <laughs> changing the subject and moving on. Uh, Literally anything else. So here's, here's a card that's maybe more relevant to other people. The Radeon RX 470 launch. We talked about the, 4X, or the RX 480. Um, I didn't have a review of this yet. Kyle over at Hard CP posted a review of it. And it was very positive, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, for a, what was it, $179 product? 179 bucks, yep. It I was, guess. Like, it was supposed to be 200 but when it launched, they dropped it a little bit, I guess. That was that specific add-in card that he was reviewing. So they, they, they announced the 480, and then they announced the 470 and 460. Now, like, I think on August 4th, the 470 is supposed to go on sale. On August 8th, I think the 460 is supposed to go on sale. Uh, and you go down to, like, what is it, 179 I'm looking. Well, they have some for 199 or No, wait. That can't some be right, right? No, 199 was like the well, expected price. Why would you buy price. a 199 if the RX 480 4 gig is supposed to start at There was one at 239 that sold out. A 470? Mm-hmm. That seems weird. Shit. But it has 8 gigs on it. Yeah, so, uh, okay, sure, why not? Um, the, the, the takeaway from it, as I looked at his review today uh, as we were driving out, was that it was a surprisingly effective card at 1080p which is still what most people are gaming at. Um, it's one of the things I like to do at the BYSU, just kind of wander around and see what computers people are actually gaming on. I think I was surprised by the quantity of ultra-wide displays yeah. that are out there. Does anybody have any of the 21 by 9 ultra-wides? Yeah. It, that, to me, is kind of like better than the 4K movement. It is, yeah. Right? Um, it obviously depends on if you're, if you're doing it for like productivity stuff, the 4K, like the big 4K screens I know you like can, can be advantageous. Just because I have the crazy spreadsheets full of SSD spec numbers right. and stuff. Right, right. Overwatch. Overwatch doesn't support 21 by 9 res? Oh. Really? Huh. Lame. Is that because of the competitive, like the competitive nature of it type of thing? Oh. You, well, <laughs> That was, <laughs> that was your mean, outside voice. I mean, that's fair. Like, it's when uh, 16 by 9 became a thing, that was an issue as well, that they didn't want you to cheat because you could see more on the left or right of the screen. Um, I think it sucks, just kind of like well, stagnating. I mean, I mean, StarCraft uh, 2, no matter what resolution you're in at, you get the same visible area. Which is oh, really? Very annoying. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the, the RX 470 is 2048 stream processors. How does that compare to the. 480. It's like 20, 2368 or something like that. So it's pretty something close. Like it's the same GPU. It's a Polaris, Polaris 10 GPU. So it's pretty close in performance. Um, but obviously AMD's uh, play here is uh, mid-range to low-cost like budget cards. Um, and they've compressed their line quite a bit actually um, to have well, they, they, I mean, you're saying they were selling 470s for 199 and 229 and stuff like that. I mean, that's literally the same price as the RX 480. But they're out of stock. The 480s yeah. are, yeah. 470s yeah. are. How many of you people have tried well. to buy video cards recently that have been out of stock? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. And it sucks, right? Like, it doesn't matter if you're looking for an AMD card or a video card. Like, having this hunt for video cards at the appropriate prices is a, is a pain in the ass. Um, why do I think that is? Um, jump two process nodes and... Well, I think there is a lot of pent-up demand for video cards. People were waiting a long time. Um, and it's, it's actually, it's ironic. A little, a little behind the scenes stuff here is like when the 1080 and the 1070 launched and you know, within a week they were out of stock consistently and you couldn't find them anywhere, I got PR people from AMD breathing down my neck, just pointing it out every day. Hey, there's no 1080s in stock. Did you notice that? How come they can't keep up with demand? How come you're not writing about this? How come you're not nailing them for this? And I was like, look, you know, it's two weeks. It's, you know, they, NVIDIA tells me that they're selling more than they've ever sold of any generation uh, at this price point, blah, blah, blah. And then literally the RX 480 comes out. Same exact thing happens. The same exact thing happens. Like it's in stock for three days. And I, I don't think I've, other than maybe one 480, that I've ever seen more come back in stock. I don't know. Right? And it's, it, I think it literally is a demand issue. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's an availability issue. I really don't. I don't think that they're having trouble making these, these chips. And, I, and when people well, tell me that, that they're selling more of 1080s than they sold of 980s and they sold of 780s in the same, price, or the same time span, I believe them. Um, and that's impressive. And we'll find out. We'll get some vague idea. No, no company actually releases these numbers, which is frustrating. Um, but if you look at, like, financial results, you can kind of 
start to dissect things, like divide by how much the average cost of a Pascal GPU is, get an idea of how many they actually sold. Yeah. But it's, math is harder for me. Do I, do I think that it's a jump of performance, why they're so popular? Yeah, I think, and, and I, really do, I really do think that it's just people held on for a long time, right? Like, they, everybody expected there to be the next big jump. And this is a, a significant jump in performance um, and power efficiency, depending on um, what you value in that, right? I think that's obviously less important than performance per dollar for these people, uh, for, for just gamers in general, actually, I would assume. Um, but I, I think it's just a lot of people are buying. My guess is that um, by the end of this year, you will see... 1080s, 1070s, 1060s, uh, RX 480s, maybe 470s and 460s actually have a significant impact on like Steam hardware survey, right? Which doesn't normally happen for multiple years. Like, what, what do you, what's the most popular GPU on the Steam hardware survey today? It's probably like a still 8800 GTS. Yeah, 9800 GT or something, right? <laughs> if you take out the Intel integrated graphics, um, but uh, <laughs> it's all the Dota. <laughs> Yeah. But what's that? It's all, it's all the, the Dota, Dota players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I that's, didn't see much Dota in the BYOC. I was surprised. Well, I, yeah, a lot of Overwatch. I see yes, a lot of Overwatch, lot of Overwatch, Overwatch. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Alan, Samsung apparently has a 15.36 terabyte SSD. Did yeah, you they, see this? Yeah, they talked about. They announced it. Like at Flash Memory Summit last year, which was like, do we have one at the ago. office? Because I'd like to use that. No, we don't oh. have. One. <laughs> Can you work on that? A fifteen point three six terabyte SSD. What uh, what is its interface like? What's its kind of performance level at? Is, uh, is it just SATA? Six? PADA. No, like, PADA. Yeah, PADA. parallel. Wasn't, wasn't that like SAS twelve MFM. gigabit or something? two and a half inch form factor? It might be NVMe, but I thought it might have been like SAS twelve gigabit yeah. or something. How much uh, over provisioning do you think it has? It's not much. It's like seven percent. Oh, okay. But there's so much flash there. That like how much you you know how much are you gonna write to it to, to do one full lap of that drive like you gotta write sixteen terabytes to the thing just to do one cycle. CDW so. is selling them currently uh-huh. uh, as of this publication for how much? Ten thousand three hundred eleven dollars and ninety nine cents with the option to lease. That's only like seventy cents a gig. <laughs> lease for three hundred twenty one dollars and three hundred twenty one dollars and seventy three cents per month, which as uh, Scott writes or I think of Scott or Sebastian. Uh, Scott calculates as 2.1 cents per gigabyte per month. I've never run into a metric like that before no. for storage cost per gig. It does get it under 10 cents per gig, which is obviously yeah. my goal. Per month. <laughs> but I did not add the per month. You have to keep doing it. Deviation on there. Yeah. yeah. There's a bill. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's 65 mm. cents per gig, by the way. Which is it is. 12 still gigs S. 12 gigs? 12 gigs S? Okay. Yep. Uh, I could... I could attempt to buy it and it would not go through. <laughs> and hey, if they ship it, that's fine. Yeah, prime now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, on, it's on lease. The guy knocks on the door. He's got a tow truck. He's like, look, I thought I was going to the wrong thing. I just, I just really need to see your computer. Uh, I'm renting to own my SSD. Yeah, yeah for a long time. Yeah. It, it doesn't take how long the lease is, actually, now that I think about it. It's, is it just forever that you have to pay $321 per month? It's probably like you go a couple of years, and then there's an option to buy at the end, you know? Right. Trade it up to the next model year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, anniversary. Did anybody's PC upgrade to Windows 10 Anniversary Edition? Yeah? Was it, was it a smooth experience? Mine was. Yeah? yeah? I did it. Mine was. You, yours did it? When did it do that? I did it at home. Yeah. Oh, I thought it just... Say again? Oh, okay. Yeah, I had to initiate I, mine. I had to oh, check, really? for, check for updates. Okay, yeah. all right. I don't know when... A streaming box that upgrades itself. That's always fun. Yeah, I was actually worried that this machine that we hadn't turned on for a while <laughs> was going to do that. And I think when I rebooted it once, it did say, like, validating updates or something. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, please don't start this. No, um, yeah. On uh, Windows Weekly, uh, Mary Jo Foley and uh, Paul Throat show, uh, yeah. they were saying that... It's going to be kind of a tiered release. They're not releasing out the wild all at once. It's going to be kind of zoned, some magic zoning by Microsoft or whatever. Yeah. So, what are the uh, feature upgrades? Uh, and the do big, I care? The biggest one is going to be <laughs> Cortana integration. Um, Cortana integration. Yeah, I mean, Cortana's already integrated into Windows 10, but they're really pushing it down your throats now. <laughs> Great! Um, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> um, 
Bash. Oh, yes. Bash. Oh, that's yes. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, that was a uh, big selling point for Mary Jo. But I, I know there was a grip. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can do, uh, you can do like face recognition, sign in, and stuff like when that. Hello could, already you could do that. Yeah. Here, no. They were talking about that as a, something they added. Supposedly. Here's mm. something odd that came out of the Windows too. Um, I mean, it's not part of the anniversary edition. It's just some random update Microsoft just did within the last week or two. Sounds if you right. use Chrome on Windows 10, you'll start seeing pop-ups saying <laughs> Edge is 36% faster than Chrome. Blah blah blah. So please use Edge. No, yeah. it's 36% better but battery it's true. life. Yeah, yeah. Battery life. Yes, battery life. Sorry. It is true though. Like when we do battery life tests on laptops, I use Chrome for the battery life because it's, I believe it's more realistic. The vast majority of users are using Chrome. Yep. Um, yeah. you know, Even especially with, if you look at like our site metrics, and we're only using one tab in Chrome when we do right. That. Yeah, this is one tab that's kind of just filtering through a bunch of stuff. Well, yeah, but but Edge gets fifteen yeah. percent better battery life on laptops. It, it doesn't it's do better. to like make me consider doing it, and then I go. Yeah, but then you nah. hate yourself. It doesn't. So. It doesn't. No. <laughs> Is yeah. it really worth it? It no. gets so much better battery life because it doesn't work on half the sites no, you go to. Well, no, I mean, external battery. You, you know, you know why that is though. When, when Microsoft uh, microphone. forked, when they forked IE, talk, talk talking sorry, microphone. Microphone. when uh, when Microsoft forked IE and made Edge, yeah. they they wanted to make a Chrome-like browser that was fully HTML5 compliant. So out of the gate, Edge was the only fully HTML5 yep. compliant browser on the market. Very lightweight, didn't use add-ons or anything. They had to reverse course and add Flash back in because people rebelled. But that, that's, you know, that, that's really where a lot of that's coming from. So. Yeah, well, yeah, they really. had to reverse course on that a little bit because the HTML5 compliance... My wife is trying to FaceTime call me now. <laughs> it's probably a bad idea. It's probably a bad idea. <laughs> it's your kid. Your kid's it's probably going to be my be daughter. It. I know it is. Yeah, yeah. So your daughter? He's Hold on. I'm pointing the camera at you He's guys. pointing the camera it out. It could be my daughter. <laughs> it's, it could be my daughter, so yep. no foul language, there, anybody. There's the kid. All right. Oh, she's waving to you. You can't see her, but trust me, she's waving. <laughs> Hi, Emmeline. Uh, we're recording a show right now. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, the baby's smiling. Aww. 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 <laughs> she, she has no idea. Yeah, pick up diapers on the way home. 15, <laughs> on your 15 hour drive. <laughs> All right. Hi, Emmeline. All right. I, <laughs> okay. This is awesome. Just keep going. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> we, we, we really can't keep talking like this. I'm literally recording a show. All right. Good night. Love you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 we'll, we'll, I don't edit the podcast anymore. It's these two. We're just going to leave that in. And I actually don't edit the podcast at all. He just like, puts I, it all I just, up. I literally <laughs> intro, care. outro, whatever. Yeah. I don't really care. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> they were going to bed. I couldn't just ignore the call. You were right. Thank you for making me answer it. Uh, what about that new Xbox One? Xbox One, the one that, the one that we, the one that we bought. <laughs> it's got a new GPU in it. It's it, got a new chip in it. It's got so many fewer right? nanometers. Right? Wait, hold on. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, all right, okay, all right, all right. Well, hold on. <laughs> in his, in his defense, he got one because in the past we've got one and took it apart, and that was like crazy views on the YouTube video yeah, that's from true. D doing a disassembly, like a live disassembly video of one. There's a reason you're current. <laughs> <laughs> there was a thought that went through my mind about that, about, uh, well, we wanted to take it apart and see the inside, but iFixit had already done it in a clean manner, so yeah. we we'll do it in an <laughs> We were going to do it manner. in the van. Is it your Xbox or PS4 that it has a fan connector held on with gaff tape? Uh, one of those, yeah. I think it's yeah. your Xbox One. I can one. take things apart. It's putting it back together that is more difficult yeah. <laughs> for us. Uh, uh, let's see. What, do you guys, anybody here use variable refresh displays, whether it be G-Sync or FreeSync? Not that many. Really? I'm just surprised, actually. Is it, is it a cost issue? Is that, or is it just, I like my monitor and it's just fine type of thing? You like your yeah. monitor? High refresh. You just prefer high refresh over variable refresh. Yeah. 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 yeah that's true. Yeah. 
That's yes. That's obviously the the, the key part. Well, and I, I bring this up because like Dell announced the new monitor, and this is not going to appease any of your requests. Uh, but it is a it's a 27 inch IPS FreeSync monitor. It's only 249 dollars. So in terms of cost, you get a big benefit there. The, it's 1080p, right? Matte finish. I like that. Um, but it is a it's it's variable refresh rate range is only 48 to 75, right? <laughs> So, so the problem that actually that actually means it doesn't do the doubling. No, nope. correct. So when you go below forty eight, you're going to tear. When you go below forty eight, you just do the tearing and or the, stuff, or the or the or yeah, VC on. gone or off is your only option. Yeah, it can't do the the low frame rate compensation that, that yep. Nvidia does in their G Sync module, that AMD does in their driver to kind of make it smooth all the way around. Yep. And this sucks for me to hear that there's only two or three people here that actually have it because, to me. The variable, the variable refresh monitor tech is like the biggest change to the gaming experience that I have seen. Yeah. With maybe the exception of like the 21 by 9 monitors when the resolutions work correctly, right? Uh, and now, you know, you can get 21 by 9 G Sync and FreeSync displays as well. Uh, and, it's, and I always knew it was a cost issue. Um, what was I just got pitched? Acer is going to send me this brand, uh, a monitor that is twenty five sixty by ten eighty. So it's it's an ultra wide, but it's a little bit lower resolution. It's a thirty inch ultra wide. Thirty inch instead of thirty four, uh, yeah. but it's curved ultra wide. But it has a two hundred hertz refresh rate. Yep. So it goes up two hundred, right? And, and it's G-Sync. And G Sync. And it's seven ninety nine. And it's like still an expensive right? display. So it's yeah. it's. It's, it's getting lower, but it's not nearly yeah. as low. They're coming hey, down. NVIDIA will be here tomorrow or Saturday. You can give them all the crap you want about pricing and see what they say. <laughs> but they'll say it's their partners that set the prices, and we both know that's not totally true. Um, but I mean, the thing does cost money for them. to. They have to sell them does, a part. but it's not, it's not, it's not the difference, right? And, yeah. AMD, and AMD's argument of FreeSync doesn't have the the upcharge that G-Sync has is valid. It is valid. It also doesn't have the quality issue. But it also like that the refresh other, rate. That, they, yeah. they brag more about the quantity of FreeSync monitors instead of the quality of their FreeSync monitors, right? Yeah. And NVIDIA does the opposite. They NVIDIA goes out of the way to, sh- to send new G-Sync monitors to us when they come out, when there's one that a partner has built that they're very proud of, that they want to show, right? Like, yep. The, the, the ultra wide 3440 by 1440 with 100 hertz type stuff, right? Whereas, we, got, we got two of those in. Yeah. Initially. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, Nvidia sent one. They they like oh, you gotta yeah. look at this guy. Look at this. And then Acer, Acer, Acer sent, sent one, one in too. Yeah. Um, but you know, AMD is kind of more like if you go to their page, it's it's it is something to be excited about. But like here's all these to support FreeSync. But when you look at monitors like this new Dell that supports it from 48 to 75, it's it's so narrow that it's kind of almost it's not useless. It's that's just trend. not as useful. That's as a trend else. we saw when they were first started to come out that I hoped would go away, right? I hoped that narrow range like that would go away, especially after AMD introduced that LFC. feature in their driver. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. To, to the, the low frame rate compensation. That, that is absolutely like a launch free sync monitor, and the launch free sync was last March. Right. Actually, the very GDC. first free sync monitor I got was twenty five. 60 by 1080. It was an ultra wide, non curved yeah. that was 48 to 75. Yeah, because like, because like when they when they first introduced LFC, I was like, oh, thank goodness, that's that one thing mm-hmm. that we kept paying them on that their display tech couldn't do that we knew right. they could do with a driver, right? But then you know, just like a few months after that, then it was just like, here's this whole additional round of monitors that you can't use that feature on that all came out. Like, so it was just ridiculous. How, how many of you guys are on 1080p displays? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just Okay, and then 25 <laughs> by 14 or 25 by 16? Either one of those? Okay. Um it's Did one die? No. You just added a second one. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then ultra wides, we said we had a, we had a couple of those, a handful of those. Okay, so a little bit more than I thought. It's nobody's less than 1080p. Right, I want to like. Is there if there's anybody on a 1024 by 768? No, there are a couple. Of, well, I Four guess by three. Uh, I did. I saw those. I saw. Yeah, an yeah but it's a couple. CRT. But if you're going to haul that CRT, it's probably a higher res than 1024 by 768. They made pretty still, high res CRT. I still have in my basement two 2048 by 1536, 75 hertz. 
CRT panels Still that better weigh than, probably 65 pounds. It's a better monitor than 90% of the monitors. And when, me, I right? bought, when I bought, uh, this was like, God, I don't know, 2004, three, I guess, when we wanted to test super high resolution, right? I had to buy a 2048 by 1536. Uh, I believe it was an NEC display. And I, I bet it, uh, yes. And I bet it was $1,800 or something ridiculous at the time, right? Uh, but, man, it was awesome. And they still make the best sound when you turn them on. I, I do. <laughs> the degauss de de button is, was Can't always, de -gauss, uh, was always great. They should have had yeah. a faux degauss uh, to, <laughs> to LCDs. Yes? <laughs> you spent $500 to get an 800 by 600 CRT to put into an arcade machine, yeah. I assume. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then because of that, they're going to go up in price. I, I hear that often. Yes? Do you see that the market for monitors, the higher res, are more like the standard? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you're. So they buy those. Higher res. Right. Yeah. Do I? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, the statement was, "Do I think it was normal consumers want higher res at kind of lower refresh, and gamers want the resolution? Obviously, higher is a little bit better, but they're not concerned if it stays at 1080p as long as the refresh yeah. rate is higher." I mean, there's a reason I have a 25 by 14 panel that's only 60 hertz at this point. It's because I'm lame and I don't find time to play video games. Well, yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, you're lame for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Until you see high refresh rate where you can Yep. Yep. You can talk about all you want. First yeah. time I saw Quake yeah. on, yeah, when you, if you it's, move from a 60 hertz to a 120 hertz or 144 hertz panel, the instantaneous, like, even if you're just playing on the damn desktop, right, and you yeah. move your mouse cursor around on the screen, you're like, well, why is this so different? You may not even understand why it's different, uh, but it feels and looks different immediately, uh, and you get that in games too. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, but I mean, there's no reason why we can't have both, right? Twenty-five, sixty. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yes. Hey, look. If if you're all gonna buy Titan X's for twelve hundred dollars, <laughs> then you can all buy twenty-one by nine. Yeah. Buy those uh, Acer Predator X34. Aren't we supposed to have a couple of Swifts to give away? Uh, actually, yeah. We are tomorrow. I keep saying tomorrow. Saturday, we will have two uh, ROG Swift displays to give away. So, yep. If you're an AMD user, you can still use it as a normal monitor. And we may work. So and it's fine. and yeah, that's true. It's we will not be throwing those out to the crowd. It's, yeah, though, it's 144 so. hertz. Ask. G Sync TN panel. How much do you guys? Does it have any input? It does no, not. No, it does not. It does not have any display ports other than, or inputs than display port. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys care about, like, display tech, uh, TN, IPS, VA? Do you care about your viewing angles and your color qualities and any of that type of stuff? I feel like in gaming, you kind of don't, but in productivity type stuff, you do. Do you guys feel differently? If you're going to buy a monitor, it's something it would be nice just to get an IPS. Right. But even though the traditional Yes, they do, yeah. yeah. I have a hard time editing an article on a TN panel. You're weird. No, it's just like it's hard. It's, no, like, no, that's it's a true statement. No, that's you, like you, the, you, the weird part. Is not you different. see a lot more wrong in a monitor than most people. Yeah. That's, that's, that's generally there the case go. with everything in tech, I find, right? If you move to 140 hertz, 44 hertz monitor, you can't go back to 60. If you move to IPS... You can't go back to TN because you start to notice these things. This is what we talk about this, right? Yeah. Uh, who was running? Um, they did a really cool, oh, Ed from Sapphire did this trick to his wife where he, he oh. said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upgrade your system. Or no, he didn't tell her. He put, yeah. he put an SSD in her system. This was you know, a couple years ago, I guess. Put an SSD in her system but didn't tell her, right? And she goes, things look faster, seem faster, whatever, and kind of went about her day. And then like two months later, Uninstalled it and put her hard drive yeah, back put in. Put her drive back. And, and she like immediately was like, "What the hell did you do to my computer? You need to, you need to fix whatever you did, right?" And so it's it's once you make that leap to something that's bigger, better, faster, or whatever, it, it can be very hard to go back. And that's unfortunately an expensive cycle to find yourself in as well. Yeah. But 
Ryan, do you see yourself yeah. viewing angle? Like, you know, like, oh, I gotta have this. So, awesome I, do I? Or is this like, I'm always sitting at my desk in the same spot, and I'm always in my mind. <laughs> That's true. So there's, there's two things. I will say I'm not a good test case for that question of do I notice angles because that's – like literally, like literally if I go to Best Buy or Sam's and I walk by a TV, I'm like, Ooh, look, look how at good that this viewing, viewing angle, angle is, right? That's pretty good, right? Like I'm kind of it's, trained. It's absolutely true. I'm kind of like trained to test and look for that stuff. So I'm probably not a good a test case. Here. What, but, but, there, but for but a TV, right, that's okay to, to be you know, judging, judging that, example, you know. Yeah. Yes, because you got a couch and there's people at different different locations for the sure. Only, the only thing that I'm sensitive to, sensitive to like color wise or like angle shift wise on a TN panel, yep. is like I've had TN panels where if you had a background of a certain color, like literally the the top of bar, the top end of the screen is a different tint yep. of that color than the bottom. Especially if you have a larger display. Yeah, if it's kind right. of a bigger panel, right? Yeah. And it's, you just get really like sensitive to it because the colors just don't even look right. Yep, especially the up and down viewing angle thing on TN, like right. it really shifts pretty well, crazy. Well, I, I think there's definitely, like, if you sit in the same location and you look at your monitor today and it's a TN monitor and it looks fine, then just buy another good quality TN monitor and you're yeah. fine. And TN's a lot better now, and you yeah. can calibrate yeah. it pretty closely. And, these but if, days. one thing I do find is, as a multi-monitor user, uh, you're more likely to see those kind of off-angle things as well, right? So I have. I have two um, Apple Cinema displays that fell off the back of a truck apparently years and years ago on my desk. So they look really good. One of them is about to blow up. I just hear popping inside of a monitor. You, know, <laughs> you should never hear popping inside of a monitor. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sure, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's in standby hey, at the office. It's still now. working. He's got insurance. Fire. It's fine. I've got a Nest. It'll tell me when the office is on fire. <laughs> um, but like multi-monitor and especially like if you've got a big desk and you kind of like slide to the side to work on stuff over here and you slide to the side to work on stuff over here, it, it could be useful. But I, I don't, I don't I, again, it's kind of like what we were talking about before. Do gamers care about power per watt on graphics cards? Yes, but Performance they'll per very watt. much, they'll, they'll sacrifice all kinds of noise and temperature and heat levels in order to get the better performance for dollars. I dollar. mean, people bought yep. R9-290s. Yeah, this is true. And the same thing on displays, right? Like, do yeah. you care about, like, color clarity and viewing angles? Yes, but not at the expense of 144 hertz, not at the expense of, of $400 refresh, or 21 by 9 or whatever your particular feature is, or $400, yes, well, what, one, as well. One area that the viewing angle does that I've noticed myself uh, does come into play, it's not necessarily desktops, laptops. Laptop displays. Um, yeah. And I mean, especially, you know, my wife is a very big laptop user. She doesn't like desktops at all. But, you know, you're sitting on a couch, she's watching something. Oh, look at this video. I'm looking at it sideways. I can't see crap because. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And to me, um, you know, somebody who works a lot on airplanes, having a screen that, like, when you can't open the screen all the way on your laptop to get to the proper viewing angle that you're supposed to be at, if it is a, a bad panel and you have to like look down at it and all the colors are inverted, uh, that's yeah. that's a real negative um, for for that. But you know, I do as I can. Yeah. So I think at least what I'm thinking about is I don't want to make the step of investing the additional money just to get one or two of those features. Sure. Mm -hmm. Spend a lot of money on it, but not just take a step. For for most of you is obviously the exception of the people who have like twenty one by nines because that was a recent purchase. Is the monitor the thing that lasts the longest in your setup by far? Yeah. Right. No. That's that's uh, all. That's always been the case. Power supply. Power supply is another one. Well, sure. <laughs> Speakers were unless, one. Unless you, I still have. Up. Oh yeah, I've I had, still have a set of. Uh, What's that, what's that? KL, not KLM. What's the oh, yeah. Klipsch. I the have a Pro Media 4.1. Yes. Yeah. yeah. With the gold, uh, like bronzish color to them. Yeah, like, good speakers. And those those have lasted a decade, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, well, I'm listening to crappy YouTube videos anyway, so this is fine. Yeah. Yeah. The speakers will last forever, but like monitors yeah. is one of those things that you do keep forever. 
Um, and you're just not used to thinking about upgrading it. But when we started to talk about G-Sync and eventually FreeSync and talk about the benefits of variable refresh, I felt like I was hitting that wall of, well, I don't upgrade my monitor. What's the graphics card doing? What's, what's the processor doing? What's the memory doing? And I, I would tell everybody, and I'll tell you guys here, it's like, this is the one thing on your computer that you were literally interacting with yeah, you're, visually. It's the thing you're looking at all the time. 100% of the time. You are never not looking at your computer if you're using your computer. Yeah, your monitor. Right? Yeah. Sometimes you're not typing and sometimes you're not using your mouse, but you're always looking at your screen. What's that? VR. You can use VR, but I mean, that's, that's a monitor. You're essentially changing your monitor out. Mm, thing. Having a 1080 with a 1080p monitor, right. you find out that your monitor is a bottleneck for the actual yeah. For everything, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have a, if you have a GTX 1080, uh, which sounds a, like a great card for a 1080 resolution, but it's you know, <laughs> it really it really means it really means upgrade Super your 1080 overkill. monitor. Um, then yeah, you're yeah. doing it wrong. I guess is what I would say, right? Like, don't spend seven hundred dollars here. Spend three hundred fifty dollars on your video card, and then spend three hundred fifty dollars on a new monitor, and and get a better overall type of experience. Yep. Yep. I'd actually choose the G-Sync at 60 hertz rather than 144 hertz. Really? Yeah. And, I, and I, I really do think it's one of those things that you have to see it really? before you can, before you really you can dive into it, right? Yeah. And, it, we, you know, we talked about VR. It's the same way. Uh, well, what? A 3D vision was one of those things. Oh, it, was obviously, yeah. it was obviously a flop, but you couldn't, but you couldn't explain yep. what it was. I remember, uh, I don't know what year it was, I took... I convinced people at Best Buy to let me bring a computer into a Best Buy. And this like, is when they this had... This was like 09. It was right before I was there. There was like a DLP that did 3D vision, right? Yeah. And I just set it up and I would let people watch or play like Left 4 Dead in... With in, the 3D glasses with 3D vision on. on. And you would see people like visibly jump backwards and all this stuff. And it's like, they're like, wow, this is awesome. How can I get it? And I was like, well... You can't. You can't. Don't you can't. Worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just recording this video for purposes of my own. Like, it's fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, G Sync and FreeSync have the same thing. Like they do, they do. Now, you mentioned VR. Does anybody in here have Vive or Rift? Both. This guy's got both. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, that's actually more than I expected more to than see. Variable refresh Rift, right now. Rift yeah. or Vive? This guy's both. Who has Rift? DK2. DK2. Oh, that DK2, counts. Yeah. And then Vive. Okay. Yeah, you got a DK2 as well. Uh, as an aside, did you know that DK2 sells for like $700 on eBay right now? So sell your DK2 and just Why? buy a Why just do buy they sell CV for so one. much? I don't know. Hmm. I have a DK1. Does that sell for $1,400 on eBay? <laughs> no. I bet it doesn't. Um, that is what, uh, VR is another thing that you, you won't know how awesome it is until you, until you try it. I don't know. I didn't go to the exhibitor area today, but it, do they have VR set up there? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they've got Doom VR yeah. set up there. Okay. I read, I read something on IGN about it that it was really cool. And you tried it? Okay. And Fallout too? Okay. All right. I'd like to try both of those. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. The Doom one. So... Yeah, and and they're, they're playing yeah. that on a Vive, right? It's the room scale stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna walk through that door any minute now. He told me. Um, <laughs> and now we cede the podcast to John. Okay. Awkward. Um, so three hours later, the people who don't have VR, have you tried mm-hmm. VR? Okay, we get a lot of nods there. Would you buy that's... VR if you had $800? No. <laughs> no. It's clearly a niche. Like, <laughs> I have this whole dedicated office space, right? And I was like, all right, we, we, we get this vibe. We're going to do these videos. We're going to do these, this performance testing. Uh, and I just, I didn't have enough room in our office yeah. for the set to set up a full, like a, a good size room scale vibe setup. It was one of the impetuses to buy this church. That I'm buying because it will. <laughs> so it's a long Churches, story. Churches, VR, they go just hand in hand. Should have. We'll be able to have like. Should have like, made different stickers for that. We'll be enough room actually. to have like. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> so, according Brian's to the IRS, Sunday school. according to the IRS, you can have regular services on any day of the week. It doesn't matter, and uh, yep. that's what we're going with. Wednesday, Wednesday nights. nights. <laughs> Wednesday nights is our normal night. This is an exception here. No, 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 no. I'm not going to apply for taxes. That's they're, a lot they're of much more critical about uh, looking into stuff there. But if, we're if all I'm going to make Alan a a deacon, a, a deacon or of something. <laughs> Somebody's going to ask questions, right? So <laughs> i got to make sure it, I can answer these questions. What was it in the van on the way here? Uh, the Church of PC Perspective? No, no, the Church of Higher Processing. Yes, yes. there you Somebody go. gave that one out as a suggestion. That's actually pretty good. Um, but that was one of the main reasons for buying the church. Not one of the main, but, but like one of the reasons like we need deciding we needed more space was I wanted to have a dedicated area to do VR testing. When new games come out, new graphics cards come out, we wanted to be able to not have to rearrange the whole office Right uh, when I brought the Vive home to my house, I don't have an empty room in my house. As it turns out, we have a lot of garbage, so it just sits <laughs> everywhere. Right, so I was like, "Okay, come on, Kelly, uh, we're going to take the dining room table out of here." And she's like, "What <laughs> are you doing? It's just for a couple of days. It's fine. I just need to see if this this yeah. VR thing works." Well, it- right, and she had zero experience, had no idea what it was. Um, she tried the the Oculus. But she's not a gamer, right? So she, I put a controller in her hand, and she didn't really know how to interact with it very well. But you put the Vive on her with those controllers that, yep. you know, hey, look, just only worry about the two triggers and, and play this, shoot that zombie in the head, you know, type of thing. Yep. And, it's and she was instantly excited about it. Yep. Um, so I, I, I actually really, I'm still high on what VR will do. But I, I actually saw VR in the BYOC, right? There are people yeah. using Rifts in the BYOC. There are people that have... Um, I guess singular Vive lighthouse stations um, yeah. in there, right? Because you said you only need one to do I like a sitting version. Sitting. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, but. it's one. It's the other setup option. Sitting. Oh, for just if you're sitting? just if you're yeah. just sitting, you have to Vive, calibrate it differently. Well, but the, yeah. uh, the thing with the, the thing with the uh, lighthouse stations that uh, this was a there was a forum post about this that someone was actually worried about power because you only get so many. Outlets, plug-in slots. You uh, can't bring. Uh, you can't bring your own power strips. Own right? Power strips, yeah. Yeah. So, basically, have to negotiate with your neighbor. Yeah, I don't know how much power those use. They're, they probably couldn't be it's USB. Just the powered, number of right? plugs was the problem. No, no, I know, yeah, but you couldn't yeah. make them like no, USB I think they're twelve volt or something. They are twelve volt, so you could hack something in your power PC. supply for your case. Mo- I think if you just take a Molex connector and <laughs> shove it in there, <laughs> <laughs> two prongs, one into yellow, one into blue, it's fine. It'll yeah, no. work. No, uh, you, get, you get melty cables. Like so yeah, okay, I'm gonna have to try out the, the Doom <laughs> VR stuff when it's here. But it, that's, I, I think one thing I will say about VR, I was, I'm not disappointed. I'm glad because more people will be able to use it. But the, the, the impact that I thought it was gonna have on on uh, GPU performance wasn't nearly as much as I thought. Right, the fact right. that a GTX 970 and now an RX 480 and a GTX 1060 um, can do VR perfectly well. Uh, I think it's a benefit in the long run to actually getting people getting yep. people to adopt it. Now you can just buy vibes and riffs. You don't have to like wait six months anymore, right? I mean, they, they do have to be more sensitive to like they're more sensitive to like the game developers for VR are dialing their stuff back sure. more because they want the experience to be ninety hertz, yeah. you know, regardless, as opposed to just relying on you know you, you changing your settings in the game and cranking everything. Yeah, up but and, I, I think I think the advent of dynamic resolution, dynamic. Uh, you know the um, what was it image um, quality type stuff, it's, oh, and yeah. it's not just hitting VR, right? Like I saw uh, what's this, uh, Tiago is that the lead dev at ID now? Uh, uh, yeah. His presentation where he talked about implementing it for ID Tech Six as well, just like in two D regular games, games, right? Yeah. Like where oh, we're gonna go below this threshold of frame rate that we don't want to go below. So dial I mean, back. Dial stuff games back. have had to do that yeah. in two D because yeah. they're not, and it's actually a really good idea. They don't have. It makes my life use. a living hell in terms of trying to evaluate. Right. Well, we did a lot of testing. I was going to try to use um, the lab, right? Oh, um, yeah, for Steam, Vive. Steam, yeah, yeah for testing uh, the Vive or just yep. t- testing VR in general for GPUs. And we figured out we couldn't use the lab because it was using the dynamic uh, you know, quality thing. Right. So we'd get a certain GPU where it was right on the threshold, and we could actually watch it as soon as it got to the point where it was about to drop below 90 frames per second rendering. It would just instantly drop the quality. Right. And it was, uh, for a couple of those notches, you couldn't even tell it dropped it because it was like going from super high to like really high or whatever. There's like 15 different levels of it or something like that. The chat is um, mad. We need to go deeper. 
I've been reading it. They just haven't been saying anything too interesting. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we have actually live people here, chat. It's very different. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have yeah, yeah. come, come to Dallas. If we would drive 16 hours to get to Dallas, you could drive 16 hours to get to Dallas. <laughs> if you were past 16 hours, then I get it. It's fine. Um, so, anybody, anybody else have any kind of like questions or things they want to pose out there? So, what do you guys think VR and a VR and first-person shooters. I think uh, the first ones I tried were awful. Yeah, they're light gun games. Uh, but from what I've read about Doom, what Doom is good, uh, raw data supposedly does it very well. I mean, it's it's very clearly you're either going to have to uh, like with the Vive, with the room scale where you're standing and using controllers, you have to have a new locomotion capability, right? And teleportation yeah. is the answer for now. Um, and it seems to work pretty well, and it also does a good job of not disorienting you. Whereas when we first got the DK2, and somebody had hacked in support for TF2, I believe. Oh, God. Right? I'm, and so ugh. you're just playing a first-person shooter with a mouse and a keyboard on, on, on the Rift. And you could look to the left by moving your mouse to the left, or you could look to the left by moving your head to the left. And it was... Instantaneous nausea, and you were using me. WASD, and, 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 you, and you, you know, you're using WAS to get around and stuff too. But like, yeah, the, and it was the just, strafing yeah. and the moving forward and backward weren't as bad as the fact that I could basically like as fast as I could look to the left, I could actually make myself look faster if I also moved the mouse at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, and that's God. that's a really bad experience for it. So I. You know, and I think actually a couple years ago at QuakeCon here they had uh, what was that the thing where you stand in it and they have like, oh the thing with the, the you're, where you're walking the Omni, yeah. right mm-hmm. where you're supposed to be able to like crouch and jump and run. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you had yeah. socks on and you had this like frictionless surface in front of you, and it's first of all. That's a lot of work to play a video game, and it's a lot of space to play a video game. It's a lot of space, um, but. That's, I don't think that's how any of us really want to do it, right? I don't, I don't know the Star Trek answer to this, uh, of how that works. It's like a holodeck. The yeah, holodeck but, answer? In the holodeck, well, can't you, like, move around? No, or, but the, that's and, a really uh, expensive holodeck, living room. Though, the holodeck was, uh, they used uh, force shields. You would, like, be moving, Maury, but it would Maury, back on. No, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, really, really, you're going to call that out in a room full of... <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's I am not the king nerd That's, here, like, the sorry. key thing is, right now it is... Uh, what was the what was the game I really liked? Uh, budget cuts. Yeah. Budget cuts was another game that used teleportation. It was kind of like a cartoony first person uh, spy action game type of thing. But it was uh, you used teleportation. But then in a room scale, you could still walk around within this some section of the space. I don't know if Doom is like that or if you're just pretty much stationary. And in a, in a really fast paced game, that may not work, right? Like it'd be really cool to have this thing where. Uh, a, a demon comes at you and you literally dive out of the way or, or move out of the way and, and then they go by you. Table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, appara- that's apparently the trick. Not yet. I could, we did do some of that. that. Oh, multiplayer? We, we, yeah, we did. I, that's the only way to play it is multiplayer, I think. No, yeah. there's the like, target practice. Oh, no, we did some of the multiplayer, too. And that's like where you're ducking behind things and lifting up, yeah. That, I mean, that's really cool. And it's, and it's um, like motion mechanic fixes that because you're on a hoverboard essentially, right? You're um, in a small space already, so... Yeah, yeah like the, the way they figured that out is you are the, the virtual space is very constrained, right? You're basically in a box that you can turn around in and pick up different things and stuff, but then the motion happens by moving kind of the 3D uh, or moving the hoverboard around in the space. Um, but when you have these huge open areas like, I, I don't... I would, is Fallout, did they just do the teleportation method for Fallout as well on their Fallout VR? I mean, I assume they would have to. I don't know of any other magic solution for motion in VR. I don't know. I think it has the potential to be really cool, but I think it, I, I kind of consider it a, a different like genre of game almost, right? Where Mini game. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Really. Yeah. They'll, somebody smarter than me will figure out how to make it work in a way... Uh, that is not just like well, on rails. The, there is the, uh, on Steam. I did notice um, that you know, Descent. They came out with a new version called Descent Underground. I think it's called. Yeah. They actually have a VR version of that. I haven't 
See, I've played Descent Underground. Awful. Well, no, well, I mean, like if you where think you do it, like the full rotation, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, yeah, but uh, if, you, if you think about it, Descent, you're basically in the cockpit. That's the that's first true. Person view, so it may actually work better in, in any kind of avionics if you're in a, type. If uh, you're in a ship, yeah, yeah, you have a ship and you can see the frame around yeah. the cockpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. Was, like a drift. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. a drift didn't do good for me either because you could look it's, and move. Yeah, it was fine for me. The thing, but say again. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Huh. That made a difference for you to actually, like, bob. Actually bob around. Like, uh, you, we disable that in games mostly now, but now yeah. we're actually implementing it in real life. <laughs> so other, what else we got other than VR so stuff? Yeah. Coming from... Uh, there's a lot of cool... There's a lot of cool displays out there with yep. ultra-wide and stuff, but I've been kind of like holding back from investing into... VR? An ultra-wide. Oh, okay. Uh, or the first-gen VR, because it's like... Yeah, sure. first-gen VR, I can't play most of my games that I would normally play with my buddies, so... You know, I'm kind of hoping for the ultra wide because that sounds pretty cool. Yep. Um, but at the same time, it's like, do I wait for next year or a year later <laughs> to get to that 4K resolution where, where 4K becomes a little bit more like I can use it for work even, and, you know, with multiple screens. And right. I, I, feel like, I feel like for gaming, like if you're more into gaming than you are for the productivity stuff, I feel like the ultra wide is like a better choice. Like the higher resolution version, the what is the 34 by 14? 34 40 by 14 40. Yeah. Um, I think. Because I recently started you know, playing around with that, and I, I alter, I, I'm now alternating. Like when I'm at work, I'm on a f uh, 4K just to have more stuff on the screen. But then at home, and I'm trying to game, like I've just noticed that the ultra wide thing is it helps for some productivity because you can have like the side by side stuff going on. Like, you know, you can have a browser and then there's plenty of room on the other half of the display for a bunch of other stuff, too, right? Um, so it gives you that, that extra width helps you there. You're not that constrained on the height. Like, I still yeah. think the height is good, right? Because it's the same height as a 27-inch 1440p. Yeah, it's the yeah. same exact thing, right, if you just took that square out of the center of it. Um, but then when it comes to actual gaming on it, it changes the experience in a, in a better way because you have more kind of periphery right. just that's there just naturally like it's where stuff you would be I, looking off to the side I, anyway it's just I don't there. like gaming in 21 I don't like 21 by 9 at all I would rather prefer having two 16 by 9 monitors side by side two but, the then but then you're but then your crosshair is in the middle, the middle of the bezel no no no, no. <laughs> I, I would game on one oh okay and yeah. for productivity I have to have that demarcation of the monitors or else I don't use all of the available space because yeah. I end up looking uh, in the center. So I don't the, I think, put, yeah, I don't I think put windows in the periphery. There that will let you create I, I need, structures, but it, oddly enough, I know what you're talking about. I want the bezel in the middle. I, yeah, I, I, I can understand. I, I don't understand. You're just a two-panel guy. Yeah, you're, that's that's <laughs> wrong. Yeah. That's yeah. wrong. And uh, games not supporting 21. I will also say yeah. my mentality is a little bit different than most. Um, if you, you, just don't, you just don't game. No, no. Like if you if you don't, you can always <laughs> wait a year. But you can say that at any point in time about any product line, about anything, right? Yeah. I'm going to buy an SSD now. You know, but if, they're just gonna, if you wait six yes. months, mm. it's just going to be cheaper per gig. You're going to be able to more capacity for your money. Yeah, but then you have to suffer through that next six months with the freaking hard drive, right? Um, things are always going to get cheaper. Things are always going to be uh, uh, better in the next generation. And obviously, you've got to moderate based on your own budget and your own lifestyle and all whatever that other stuff is. And obviously, if you know pretty sure that NVIDIA is going to release a new video card two weeks from now, don't buy a GPU today, right? But other than that, I'm of the mindset that buy what makes you happy and, and improves your gaming today, right? And if you don't think VR does that, but you think 21 by 9 will, give it a shot. As it turns out, most places have return policies as well. Like if you're just like, this yeah. did not affect Amazon me. Amazon is very way. liberal about taking products back. They are, in fact. Well, that's why I was looking at the VR. Like, I have, from what I understand, once they do the jump to a 4K version of the VR, that's yeah. when text becomes a little more legible. Sure. Actually, yeah. Just throw in some yeah. It, that'll yeah. absolutely, that'll that is, absolutely. That is very true. Because there are, I was trying virtual desktop. 
it bad. stuff on the Vive, Jeez. and it was horrible. Not because the Vive was horrible, just because the resolution isn't there. Yeah. You know, to try to do a desktop that's virtually sitting in just front of you. closer to like, it. No, I was, I, was, <laughs> I, 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 was doing, I was doing the seated position thing, and I, was, I, I bumped the Vive into my monitor. <laughs> because I was trying to read the virtual display. <laughs> I was like, I need to see this too. And I hit something. Oh. And I was like, wow. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be like Alan. Right. Well, it'll right. still be it'll still be ninety. Like they probably won't they go probably, any lower. They'll never drop below ninety on on that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but there. Has anybody got experience with a VR and SLI? I keep hearing it's great. No. It's not a thing yet. Yeah, VR for multi GPU is not a thing. It's not a thing yet. Nothing, it, it, nothing's doing it. Actually, some actually code in support for SLI. Right. Like of just so, if you look at in the driver. Nvidia's yeah. Funhouse demo that they put out. It will take advantage of multi-GPU because they specifically code it to. Uh, like, they can use one full GPU for physics. It can use two GPU. I think it can use two GPUs for rendering. Yeah. Uh, because the first demo they did of it used three 1080s. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Three 1080s. Apparently, you can use it on a single 1060 now. The experience will be slightly different, but, but you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, it actually wasn't bad on the 980. Multi GPU, just not like multi GPU, is going through this horrible uh, window of time where DirectX 12 gave it the middle finger, Vulkan gave it the middle finger, VR gave it the middle finger, and like everybody's trying to decide if it's any good, right? So Nvidia kind of said three and four way we're out. We can't keep up with the R and D. We can't keep up with all that stuff. Uh, AMD has kind of interesting when Raja came out and did the interview with us kind of doubled down on it and said this is yeah, the this is quad this, is still a thing this is this is how we're going to move forward in the industry people are going to figure out how to do multi GPU like they figured out how to do multi core CPU and it's going to be a software evolution not a revolution um, yeah but, but we haven't stagnated in GPU performance like we have in CPU performance like we had a dice rink and now we're getting Buku performance right. increases. Like, the, yeah. like the, G, the Titan X is still significantly faster than anything we had before, right? Yeah. And the reason we went to multi-core CPUs is because we couldn't turn that clock speed up any higher. Yeah. Um, the thing you've got to realize is a GPU is already a multiple-core thing in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Like but, one but, GPU is actually just a huge multiple-thread sure. thing. But it's more about memory structure at yeah. that point, right? Yeah. It's, it's more about data sharing and back and forth uh, for that. But I don't, I don't expect that to change anytime soon. I don't think... Um, suddenly VR games will be using it. And the, and the one thing, the one GPU per eye doesn't really work anymore, uh, especially when you consider that like what NVIDIA did with simultaneous multi-projection on Pascal is they basically cut out the geometry work that one of the GPUs would even have to do to begin with. Right? So the whole idea of splitting it one for each eye kind of doesn't make as much sense because one GPU would be doing significantly less work yep. than the other. Isn't there something coming up you don't have the bandwidth bridge anymore. Yeah. It's all done through the bus. I mean, AMD does their crossfire. All That's the transfers are through the PCI Express bus. No, yeah, no. It's... I mean, it, crossfire uses what they call XDMA, which is essentially just transfer over the, over the bus. NVIDIA still uses uh, an SLI bridge. They came out with a new bridge that has double the bandwidth. Um, but... It's really only it's really really only important to people if you're using 4K or multiple 4K monitors at a time. If you're running 25 by 14 or even a 21 by 9 display, the bandwidth improvements there don't actually affect you. Yeah. Um, and the VR side of things is even let's say 2160 by 1600 is your total res. That's what the so res is kind of not really yeah. an important thing for for that either. Right. It's more on the software side. It's more on how do we. Like, game developers just went away from ta uh, tactics that allow you to easily divide the work, is, is what it is, right? Frames, future frames depend on the actions of current frames, the, the visual state of current frames. And so you can't store that data on both GPUs at the same time or transfer it back and forth without overhead. Uh, and so that's kind of where that breaks down. It's called uh, what's the deferred rendering engines, right? If you look up deferred rendering, it's basically... We're going to wait until the very last second to do something based on the next frame. We're going to like pre-add something to the to that current frame based on the next frame, and then uh, especially the applies frame. to the VR stuff, especially. Yeah, because with VR you have um, late warp and all these other technologies that are really meant to make sure you're getting the very latest possible image based on where your headset is and your hand controllers went. Yep. Um, and so you can't really move that between GPUs easily. Where where literally. 
tens of milliseconds make the difference between you getting that frame to your eyes or not and thus becoming slightly nauseous because of it, um, transfer of that data across an extra bus becomes a pain in the ass. Yeah. And I guess that's one way to put it. And I do still think, uh, I know you'd mentioned like you were kind of holding off on the VR until like there were games that supported it or something like that. I think it's really going to be more like, I don't think we're ever going to get to a point where you're just going to have like a game that's the same on the desktop as it is in VR. I know that they're working on a lot of After. To be yeah. Optimized, like, uh, Fallout and Doom are being optimized to be able to support VR. Yep. Yep. So, yep. In the future titles, probably in the next, I would say, in two years from now, there's going to be a, you're going to see that shift of more games supporting yeah. VR. Yeah. But then also, it's more of, okay, I have a VR headset and just playing games, but if I could spend the same amount of money a year or two from now, I have a 4K resolution where I can use it for, for yep. playing my Oh, sure. Games, yeah. It would be a better time to make the move, and like probably more people would do it then, you know, when resolution's higher and the specs are higher. And they really cranked up that AC up there, didn't they? Yeah. I'm not high on the idea of wearing a VR headset for 12 hours a day, though. <laughs> right? And that's, that's the thing, like... And we've Vi tried it a lot. To me, the Oculus, the Rift is more comfortable than the Vive, but they're both... Like, if, if you game for two hours straight, which is a long session, one of those, you take it off, you feel it, right? You've got yeah. the raccoon eyes thing going, you've got sweat. Uh, sharing VR headsets is a, really a bad idea. Uh, but it's, you know, I think, I think AR has more possibilities for that type of stuff. Right? And some kind of like lightweight glasses that I wear type of I thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Like, those are the types of interfaces that we will get to. And it will be, hopefully, we'll get to them at a time where I'm still standing in a room like this talking to you at like a QuakeCon <laughs> event, right? Where it's not 20 years from now, it's three or four or five years from now. Um, but I, I, I still think a good, like, AR is the answer, right? Eventually, because if, if, if you have really good AR, you just black out everything else, and boom, you have a VR headset. So, but then being able to overlay things otherwise, you still need the resolution, you still need the refresh rate, you still need all the things you're asking so for. But play a little bit of the, the VR side of things. So yeah. I have a desktop monitor that sits this close to me. Yep. So my eyes are constantly focusing at that distance. Mm -hmm. Where in a VR environment, I can place that in a, a projector size sure. 10 feet away from me. My eyes are then changing the focus from 10 feet versus... Yep. Sure. But I mean, like I said, in an AR headset, you could black out everything and basically duplicate a VR setup. Um, and that works as long as the resolution is high and your DPI is solid. Otherwise, you run into your monitor when you move <laughs> close to read, <laughs> to read the text, right? That, well, that was yeah. like a, that's like an old moment right there when dunk into the window with yeah. your VR headset on. <laughs> and I, and I, pay, I paid for that app, too. So I paid money to hit my head into my, it's pretty into good. my monitor. It's yeah. pretty good. I, I think it'll be really interesting. I hope if, if you, anybody who hasn't tried VR uh, tries it here, because it does sound like the demos uh, that they have for Doom are actually really impressive. And they're getting better, right? Like, I was one of the guys with, who tried the, the duct tape setup that Carmack had, right? And that's, even then, it was awesome. And then you look at how far we've gone in, what has it been, three years yeah. or something like that? It's, it's, it's pretty impressive, so... Yeah. Microsoft stores have them. Oh, do they? Okay, so the Microsoft stores have it. Best Buy does that too. Micro Center. Wear Some your VR centers. condoms, please. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a good idea. I don't know who manufactured those. Did you see those? Yeah. The, the actual VR condoms. So it's like a, it's like, it's like, it's like a, a surgical mask, essentially, but they move it up here with like a slit for your eyes, but it like covers <laughs> a part of your face, right? And it's meant, it's a, it's a really good idea. It's like, like the thing that covers the toilet. You make those for, it is. Okay, that, that's a uh, cosplay idea this year. I mean, that's on. a, that's a yeah. million dollar idea, at least. The right condom. Yeah, well, uh, with not using the but, VR booth, yeah, yeah. Next year, QuakeCon, you're going to be the VR condom man. Yeah, okay. like, go, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, anything else before we wrap up? Yes, sir. VR 
VR what? Cover? VR cover. A leatherette covering for the for the headset. Ooh, can I get an Alcantara? So it's so it's so it's like the kind of covering you have on ear headphones. Headphones, yeah. except applied to the. We should really just all idea. get ski masks, right? That are ski masks. like ninja ski masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa! Hey, hey, hey! Yeah. Ah. And he wants it to zip down the face of it. Yeah, no too. zip, no zipper on the mouth. Hey, that, that's that's <laughs> until tomorrow night. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess that will uh, wrap up the show, everybody. Uh, how, did we actually have people watch? Did it work? The whole I time? don't know. We have no idea. Oh, oh, no. Okay. All right. Well, that's that always makes me feel better when the guy running the stream's like, ah, I don't. Uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah oh. Patreon. Hey, pimp the Patreon. Oh. Uh, Wait, look, look at your email. Look at my email. So oh, okay. Any... So we always do this. Yes, I guess I forgot this is right there. We didn't do. We didn't have a rundown, so I didn't have a list to talk about. We do have a Patreon, patreoncom per. Uh, those are for people who want, who for some reason enjoy this shit and they want to like <laughs> contribute on a monthly basis to us. And we, and we, hey, that shirt looks orange. Did you guys know our shirt looks orange on this stream? It's supposed to be. It's supposed um, to be red. And uh, so I always say, if you upgrade or uh, add, become a new patron while the stream is going, I will say your name. And uh, let's see, we got a new pledge from, oh, man. We did get some. Uh, Chirag Gandhi pledged $5 a month. Thank you very much. Matthew Richmond pledged $3 a month. And Full to Dream, Full to Dream <laughs> edited their pledge. Up to five dollars a month. Thank you very, thank you very much. We do appreciate it, guys. Um, I, that's it. I, normally, I have a list. I don't really remember all the things I say at the end. pcpercom slash podcast yep. uh, If you're in the Dallas area, Saturday at the almost crack of dawn, 10 a.m. Basically, right before McDonald's breakfast ends. No, it's, it's a Sunday. It actually goes later. Or no, it's Saturday. So right before we, uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday, uh, local time here in Dallas, come on out. It's, you, it's free, right? Like, yes. It's free. You just got to register, sign up. You get one of these medical bracelets, I guess. There's a line, usually. Yes, there's a line. So make sure you get here early. I don't know what time. Do we know what time the reg opens on Saturday? 9 to 7. 9 to 7. So you got an hour before you can get in line to reg, and then you can get... Uh, at the workshop at 10. We have a lot of hardware to give away, guys. If you go to pcper.com slash workshop, you can see a list of all the hardware that we're going to give away. There's actually a couple of things on there, or a couple of things that aren't on there that showed up magically uh, that we're going to give away as well. So uh, we thank all of our sponsors for that. And we'll obviously, thank them on the workshop. The flagship prize? Um, obviously, <laughs> good save, good save. We do have... We will be giving out uh, Make PC Gaming Great Again t-shirts. We have stickers, uh, both with just the PC Perspective logo and the, the brand new slogan. And we have some um, electric buttons as well. So uh, we have, we have a, I think, two or three GTX 1080s to give out. And we have eight, I think we have eight 1070s. Yep. Like I said, we have the two ROG Swift displays. We have a, we have that full PC, right? Like the mini PC with like a GTX the Raven 60 in it. Yeah, the no. Zotac thing. I know. Talking about like, like oh. I'm talking about the Zotac thing, but uh, I don't know. I'm looking at 1070s and motherboards and stuff right here in in front of us. So there's 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 a lot of goodies there, guys. Uh, so come out. We've got boxes of T-shirts as well. So uh, thank you everyone for hanging out. Thank you guys for for coming to the. Uh, I, all the way out in our lecture hall, and I apologize if I if I seem to yell. Thank you, thank you. I don't think I like standing behind podiums like hey, this. Uh, so, Ryan, one thing I wanted yes. to mention. Uh, if any of y'all need iFixit stuff... Uh, oh, yeah, they got a booth set up. They got right? a booth right outside the BYOC. And if you drop they're your running, iPhone while you're yes. here... Yes, it will fix it. Yeah. They but will fix it here. Yeah. But they're also running deals. The new Pro set of theirs is $50 during the show. It's very And nice. if you want the, uh, the full wood... Uh, the full bit set in, wood, uh, in the wood container oh, is $80. Like huh? Yeah, well, the new set, it's like 100, I don't know how many bits, it's a lot of bits, but it's like 80 bucks instead of 120 bucks, so. 64, 128. <laughs> Good numbers. But yeah, but the new yeah. Pro set is, is really nice, too. I mean, I have an old. It is very nice. I, I will. Yeah.
pay for this ad spot, Maury. No, they didn't. But <laughs> Casper.com slash PC per. Casper yeah. mattresses. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have any of that. <laughs> they sponsored last night's you know, live in stream. Re in retrospect, I'm looking. I do think we were supposed to have an ad on this one, but we'll make uh -oh. it. Uh, so thanks, everyone. We'll uh, On the live stream, we'll see you guys later. And everybody else in here, uh, we'll hang out. So thanks, everyone.